David, it's the first chance we've had to sit down and talk to you since you took on the role. Firstly, congratulations. Thank um, you. Secondly, tell us a bit about the background of, of, yeah. the, of the position. Well, I've been at the club now for over four years now and initially came in as loans manager and pathway development manager. So I've been doing that for three, three and a bit years and gradually the role evolved and the group evolved and um, became more inclusive and, and getting involved in a lot more things. And then from that, obviously Dan Ashworth being technical director, he started involving me in more and more and created a role, an assistant te technical director that um, he felt was going to be beneficial to the club. So when that role sort of became open, Dan asked me if I'd be interested, um, which I was. Um, so I was looking forward to, to moving into that role and just being more involved in the general day-to-day -day specifics of the training ground, really. My role had been more on the road and looking after the lone players and just managing that, those sorts of situations. So to be at the training ground more was appealing. Um, I spent a lot of time at training grounds in the past in different roles, so that, I looked forward to, to doing that. But then the situation quickly changed. Dan left, as we all know, and um, from there became acting technical director. So that happened really quickly. So from pathway development, assistant technical to acting technical director. Um, so, but really enjoyed it. Got a lot of help in that role, which was, was obviously new to me. And then did that role for a number of months. And then after about three or four months doing the role, I was offered the job on a permanent basis, which I was delighted to accept. And I've been doing it now for probably a month, six weeks, although it feels like about 10 minutes, to be honest, it's gone so quick and, it, and it's been so busy. But had loads of help, um, really enjoyed the role, had lots of support from Tony and Paul and all the exec committee and board, to be honest, and then with Graham and Hope as, as first team managers and all the other staff as well in the various departments then. You know, I obviously I've known them previously, which has helped them not come into the building um, fresh, but um, just learning on the job and trying to help where I can. How helpful was it having that time under someone like Dan Ashworth, who obviously has the experience of that role, yeah. West Brom, with England, um, and obviously did a lot of good work during his time here in terms of putting things in place, yeah. structures. How, of course, yeah. How helpful was that? Very helpful. You know, Dan's very experienced in the role, technical director. He's worked, as you said, at some fantastic places, and he's done a fantastic job at Brighton. And <clears throat> I think it's important I don't try and be Dan. You know, I'm not Dan. I'm very different. My background's very different. And I think it's important that I, I acknowledge that. And, and, and the club have made me very aware of that. But Dan's put some some really good processes, some really good things in place that I think my part of my role is to build on that. So I'll obviously, I still speak to Dan, you know, Dan's got great experience, he's still someone that can pick up the phone to. But, you know, also the club's got to keep moving forward, we've got to keep looking for what the next thing is and, and still remembering what we are as a club, which I think is really, really important. And I'm learning that as well, you know, the, as you get to know more and more about the club and its history and, and how it works on a day-to-day -day basis and how Tony and Paul and the rest of the board want the club to be moving forward. So it's a constant evolution and it's a really exciting time to be at Brighton and Hove and, and I'm really enjoying it. Let's talk about that experience you mentioned there. Player, international, played a lot of games in the Premier League, the Scottish Premier League, been a coach, assistant manager, manager, yeah. pathway development manager. You've seen the game from every angle. Yeah, I have. I've had lots of good experiences. I've been really lucky in my footballing career, both in terms of playing and, and then coaching and, and managing and being an assistant manager. And then from that point, I, I sort of decided to go down a different route. So um, I started studying. I took a master's in sport and directorship and, and I moved into the pathway development role, as I, I said earlier. So my career just went in a different direction. And I, and I, you know, I made that choice clearly. And when I got the opportunity to come work at Brighton Hove Albion, it felt like a really a good fit for me at that time in terms of the, the way the club was, um, its reputation, the people that were working at that club and the sort of club I wanted to be at. So that really aligned to, to where I was in my career and I've enjoyed every minute of being here, I really have in terms of the people that work here, how the club is, um, how Brighton and Hove are as places. And um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it and just looking forward to trying to help the club to to continue to develop. It's been a fantastic story. You know, I've heard from the people at the training ground, from the directors, we've been on that journey from where Brighton and Hove Albion have been to, to where they are now in that last day of the season. You know, finishing, finishing ninth in the Premier League after a, a really impressive campaign. You know, it was a special day and it's something that, 
you know, gives you the appetite to, to go and do similar things and build, build on that in the future. How do you build on that? I think you just keep doing the right things. I think, you know, Graham's very focused on performance, you know, trying to be better, trying to improve what we've got, trying developing who we have, both in terms of staff and players and us as a club. So I think you just got to keep doing what you're good at and still looking for edges where you can to try and try and make things better. And this club's, you know, it's got a really good infrastructure in terms of a training ground that's second to none. You know, there's all the facilities within that and the people within that that for players and, and people who've got the mindset to improve, then it's all there for them. So playing in a fantastic league, you know, so you you can learn from opposition, you can compete against the best and it, it's, it seems like a, a really good place to be at the minute and nothing's guaranteed. We know it's it's very fine lines and there are difficult times as we showed last season when we had some results that, that weren't going our way but the club and the ownership and the board are, they don't panic and I saw that for myself in the boardroom, you know, they take, they take stock, they, they stick to the plan and I think that's a real strength for us as a football club. I'm guessing there's not a typical day in the life of a technical director, probably quite a varied role, but trying to scratch the surface of what, what that role entails, how, how, do you, how do you see it? What yeah. would a, maybe a typical week look like? Yeah, I think it's hard to, to say what's typical. I think, as you say, it's really broad and, and fundamentally I'm just trying to support all the various departments within the football club. Obviously, men's and women's first team are, are front facing and you know, what people see and, and people look for. But behind that, there's obviously recruitment departments, medical departments, sports science departments, analysis departments, and academy that's flourishing as well. And, you know, so there, there's a number of in player and, you know, well-being as well, which is really important for us as a club and how we operate. So within that, just helping all those people that lead those departments, aligning them, bringing them together, enabling them to to discuss with each other how we can be better and any issues that come up. So basically just trying to um, enable the good people that we have to have the best circumstances and environment to do the job as best they can and support the players, which, you know, as we all know, that's what it's about to get them in as good a place and, and give them every reason to perform as well as they can. Looking at the your former role almost, the, the loans manager, uh -huh. pathway development role, obviously Gordon Greer has now come in to, to fill yeah. that. A lot of young players, some training with the first team. You, is there a plan in place for where some might go out on loan, some might stay? Yeah, absolutely. Every player's got a plan, you know, and it, as we know, football changes every day, so that plan can also change every day, but it is a particular part of our model and how we work. We're probably not a club at the minute that's going to back, go and buy Premier League ready players who are going to be top 10 Premier League footballers, which is what we want to be as a football club. So. I think our model is more maybe buying a little bit early and developing those players and sometimes loans are the best way of doing that. I think we're really fortunate we've got a manager who will give young players a chance and he's shown that with Tariq Lamptey, with Robert Sanchez, with, with guys who have come in and at a young age have been given the opportunity to, to play in the Premier League amongst others and you know, hopefully we can get a reputation as being a club who will give opportunity and give that opportunity to play in the Premier League and develop in the Premier League. But that's not the pathway for everyone. Some players need a step in between and we've had, you know, you look at Moises Caicedo going out last year and getting some games in Belgium, then coming back in, getting an opportunity with the first team and, and grabbing it with both hands. So every player's pathway is different. We we look at every individual differently. There's There's also a pathway straight from academy to first team, that's obviously a big jump. Evan Ferguson, Jeremy Sarmiento have done that recently and again that's that's a benefit we have in terms of a management and coaches who, who know the 23s, who know the 18s, who know the players. These players will get opportunities to train with the first team with our, within our club. They, they come over a lot, the coaches know them, they, they get to know them better, they get to compete against first team players. So. In that respect, we're very fortunate. That doesn't happen at all football clubs that, that I've been associated with and I know from, from speaking to a lot of other people. So there is a pathway. It's been clear to see that there's an opportunity for young players. It's also clear to see that some players like Ben White and Eve Basuma recently have moved on and you know and have gone on to, to sort of Champions League level football clubs as well. So it's important we know where we are and we give out the impression that there is an opportunity here and you know we we are aligned in terms of what we want to do and you know and every 
players' pathways different within that as well. Is that important in terms of recruiting players to show that you w will let them move on and potentially move to, to bigger clubs than, than Brighton? I, I think it is, yeah. I think it's important that what people say and what they do, you know, sometimes can be two different things. So I think what we do is, is most important. And, and people can see that. People can see we give opportunities to young players. And then at some stage, if it's right for the club and it's right for the individual and they want to leave, then I think that's got to be part part of the process as well. It's not something we want to do. You know, we want to keep all our best players. And I think we're fortunate in terms of having an owner who, who, who won't sell players if the valuation isn't right or he doesn't think it's right for us as a football club. So I think that's... That's really important to emphasise that. But if it's right for everyone and it suits the football club and the player makes it clear he wants to leave, then that's very different. But we want to be a club where, where people want to be. And I think we've shown that. I think we've shown that we, we can be a destination football club. We can be a top 10 Premier League football club as well. And I think that's, that's where we want to strive to be. And that's what we, we want to do. We want to be in the position where, where we've got really good players, but they don't want to leave as well. You mentioned bravery with Graham bringing the young players in. I think also he shows an element of bravery and boldness in the way that he plays. Yeah. In terms of the pl playing style and your rapport and relationship with Graham, um, what's your thoughts on that? I, I agree. I think Graham is very brave, but, but that's the type of football he believes in. It's not bravery, it's not reckless, it's bravery because he believes he'll get benefits from doing that. And I think the buy-in he gets from the players from doing that is also really important. I think he's a manager, if a player makes a mistake, he's not one to come down on them like a ton of bricks. I think he'll encourage them if it's for the right reasons. And therefore, the players, the players have got trust in the manager, they've got trust in the manager and his staff's methods in terms of how he treats them, which I think, you know, from the inside, I can see that he treats people really well, which is, which is really important for him and for the club in general. And I think players and people respond to that now. And I think that's, that's important that from that relationship and from the trust they get in him, that bravery is elicited in a really high level against really good players where, where it'd be easy not to do that and not to buy in that. And I saw last season, especially when results were tough for a period, they stuck to the method, you know, the, they believed in what they were doing and, and we came through that difficult period. And that, that for me was, you know, was a real vindication of, you know, that, that we are doing the right thing. And there'll still be ups and downs because there always isn't football, but I think that period for me and, you know, my understanding of how things are working here was, was really important. Fans have definitely bought into it. How important is the style of play in that respect? Yeah, in terms I think of the, the entertainment? fans, yeah, they've got to enjoy it. I think that's part of it. And fans and staff and players like to win. You know, I think that's, that's also really important. You know, you, you've got to have both. You can't have one without the other. And I think, you know, we as a, have evolved as a football club. We've become, we've come into the Premier League. It's hard to get in the Premier League. It's very hard to stay in the Premier League. It's even harder to establish yourself in the Premier League. So there's lots of steps along the way and you've got to do them in, incrementally. I don't think you can make two big jumps too soon. And I think, you know, credit to, to Tony and Paul Barber and the board for doing that, for for putting in place the things that have helped that and Graham for, for building a squad that's enabled us to do that as well. But you've got to keep pushing. You've got to remember where you've come from. I think that's also really important. And people around the club do remember the, the difficult times and the difficult days. And as I said earlier, the last day of the season when we, we did get that win and we did finish, finish ninth felt really important. And you could see how much it meant to the fans. And I think the way we did it, was also really important in terms of the style of football and, and the support they gave us towards the end of the season, you know, being at all the games and seeing that, the Manchester United game, the West Ham game, I, I think you know, they can't underestimate how important they can be to the team and what they can bring to the team and the belief when things are difficult that they give the players and also enjoying the, the good times and when, when the results are good. So yeah, definitely, they, I think they see what what the manager and his staff are trying to do and they've definitely responded to, to the players and the coaches um, within that. I want to touch a little bit on the women's side. Obviously you've got a daughter that plays at Everton, so what's the plans there? High expectations and, and looking to push on. We've got a fantastic facility which is, is second to none in the country, I think, in terms of preparation and equipment. The training pitches are excellent. I think, you know, the women's game is it's only three years professional, it's very early in its development and you know there's still 
development happening daily, I think. And, you know, we can see the women's Euros, the interest there is in that and the publicity it brings. And, you know, women's football is here to stay clearly. And we at Brighton and Hove Albion take it very seriously. We want to be a top four WSL club. We want to keep evolving, keep pushing. We want to be in a, in a position where we're competing at the top end of the game. And it's important not to take those steps too quickly, as I said as well previously, in terms of the last two finishes, sixth and seventh in the league, is, is stability. And, you know, we've got to keep pushing. The women's game is different in terms of the length of the contract and the movement between clubs of players. And I think we've got to understand that and we've got to keep pushing forward to, to try and you know, alter that to our way of thinking and, and how we want it to move forward while still being respectful of where the women's game's been, but also trying to take it to where, where we all want it to be. So, you know, we're fully supportive of it and really excited to see it develop and, you know, and get it to, to where we want it to be. And do those facilities give you that platform to really build, foundation almost, to build that platform off of? Yeah, they do. The infrastructure, you know, is, is so impressive. I think anybody that sees it and the Norwegian national team have been training here recently during the Euros and I think, you know, word will get out and people will see, you know, how serious we are about women's football. And I think that word will spread and um, it will help us to develop. Obviously, within that, you've got to do a lot of other things right and, and we're continually trying to do that and trying to build. There will be games at the Amex next season for the women's team, which is exciting and, you know, that's that's their level and that's where we, we want the sort of... We've been at Crawley recently for the last few seasons, which is um, not ideal probably but the best thing for us at this present time and then getting games at a purpose-built stadium or at the Amex or wherever it may be would, would be the future vision that we want we want for the club but you know these things take time and as I said we're relatively early in the development of the women's game but it's something we, we take very seriously and we are the board I know and the owner are very invested in. So a ninth place finishing the Premier League and a seventh place finishing the WSL last season. Is it looking ahead to the upcoming season? Is it just a case of keeping that progress, keeping moving forward? Yeah, of course. And, and that's you know the manager's jobs in terms of you know dealing day to day and looking at the short term in terms of looking to improve people and, and players and systems and, and my job to oversee that as well in terms of enabling that to happen but I think you know we'll always be focused on performance we'll always be focused on improving we're fortunate we've got a board and an owner who will invest in in facilities invest in things that we think can help the teams and, and that will continue to be the case so it's it's Premier League level it's WS level it's a really tough level you know it's they're the best leagues in the world you know or certainly one of them so it's a really competitive environment and you know, very quickly it can become difficult and you can have some tough times, but we just got to focus on what we do. I think we're fortunate and we know what we are and we know what our methods are. We're very aligned from an owner who's a Brighton fan, which is a massive, massive advantage. He understands the culture, he understands the club, he knows what he wants, and I think that filters through the club. So we've got to keep true to our own values in terms of what we believe in, but we've also got to be competitive. We've got to want to win. We've got to be um, realise that Premier League is an elite performance environment. So, you know, we've got to be competitive. We've got to be good at what we do. And what happened last season, you know, when you come round to August, you start again at zero points. So, you know, that that can be intimidating. It can be difficult. So, we've got to be we've got to be conscious of that while still optimistic and still excited about you know, where we are and how we've got there and, and looking to build on, you know, the good work that's gone before. And finally, you still enjoying it? It's been, a, 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 I guess, a whirlwind six weeks since you took on the role, well, yeah. a whirlwind six months probably since you took it on as interim uh, technical director, but you still enjoying it? I am. You, get, you getting any time with the family? Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm fortunate in terms of it. It's, it's a busy job, but it's a good job. and. I genuinely am really fortunate I work with good people. The owner, Tony's fantastic. Paul Barber, the chief exec, and all the board, you know, they're, they're good people. They're, they're clear in their communication. Graham and Hope is, you know, coaches are, you know, are good people to work with as well. And, you know, I'm fortunate in terms of all the staff that at the training ground who I've knew previously in different roles I get on well with. So, yeah, I, I am enjoying it to ask your question and answer your question, sorry. And it is hard. It is, there's a lot of work, but it's good work. And, you know, to see the team play and look forward to 
the days we had, like at the end of the last season, you know, it really gives you the motivation to try and help wherever you can and try and keep pushing forward and, you know, and, and give the Brighton Hove Albion fans and board and players and staff um, lots of more enjoyable days.